Okay. Uh, my song for Masha Ben, uh, T.L. Sherwood. Masha Ben comes to our home. There is little ceremony for the marriage. She waits easily and plants as diligently as any of us who work the soil. Eagerly, Masha Ben helps with the meals and laundry. In the fields I work near her, I tell her what to expect when the time comes, her duty as a wife. I tell her so she will not be as startled as I had been. My two children are quick to befriend her. Baez is as tall and as lanky as I imagine Zayer was at that age. He chases Masha Ben with a snake he catches near the well. She runs away. I see her smile. My daughter Kaylee is a cautious child. I often think she arrived too soon and is not prepared for the harshness of life. I often hear her and Masha Ben whispering in the dark about Masha Ben's old home. Night after night, I please Zaire, exhausted, so I won't go to her later on. This is successful until I grow happy with my fifth child. Zabai, Zaire's cousin, and my friend Jaylin's husband notice this first. If you were my wife, it wouldn't be so long between babes. Zabai proclaims loudly while we are standing near the well. Jaylin and I exchange glances. She looks away in sadness. I remain silent. Masha Ben asks about my changing body. I tell her things do not always end the way we would like. I tell her about the two I left nameless, each one's breath gone before a new morning could arrive. She asks, and I take her to the graves near the edge of our property, where the Alpiza grows. A small ribbon pinned there two days later shows me she cares. I am touched by her action. Zaire asks about my condition in the morning. He is upset that there will be another child soon and curses me. When I cry, he is sorry. He kisses me. He says he will pray for an answer, then leaves for the gaming tables. My children and my husband's new wife play a chasing game outside. Masha Ben tells Kaylee and Fayez a story about a gluttonous boat. The story makes them laugh. We eat our dinner quietly without Zayir. After my children fall asleep, I ask Masha Ben to follow me up to where I'm making an extra potent calming tea for Zayir that evening. When I first came to this village, Zaire and I often fought loudly at night. One morning, after I had been slapped many times, Jaylin called me over to her house. She told me the secret of a happy union is as simple as sleep, and sleep is easy to find in a calming tea. She took some opium that she kept hidden and explained that if all the tea one makes for meals is sweet, a man finding a glass of sweet, calming tea near his bedside will not think it any different than the room he drinks during the day. She showed me the amounts to use and told me to insist that Sayer drink it when his mood was foul. She told me that enmity in one's family home is never secret in the tribe and that ill will reverberated easier than happiness. Um, actually, all the characters uh, came out of a New York Times Magazine uh, photo essay, and it was about uh, older Afghani men marrying child brides. Um, but the way I originally saw the narrator was as somebody being interviewed.
maybe through a screen or only in silhouette. And she was telling the story of how she saw her village and what took place in it. Um, yeah, one of the pictures of the old men, one of the men, he didn't look as happy as the others. It looked like he not exactly felt shame, but that he knew he was going to be scrutinized by other people. And it, in that picture, it looked like he sensed that what he was doing was wrong, even though where he lived, this was acceptable. And, and that really sparked my interest because I've seen that in real life is how people will do things they know are wrong, but it's okay where they live. But there's something inside them that's telling them that maybe it's not right. Um, I have a lot of characters just come to me, which can be quite annoying at times. But some of them don't seem very special, and I found the ones that are most special is because I've looked at what they fear. And I, I think that's a good way to know anybody, but it takes a lot for people to admit what they really fear. Because somebody can say, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. But what they're really fearing is, is if they lose their job, how they will look in somebody else's eyes. And that's a different fear. I have so many characters I love. Um, two that came to mind uh, right away were Andrew Wiggins, who's actually Ender in Ender's Game, and the character of Alfred and June in The Handmaid's Tale. And I, I thought both of them were so engaging because they were strong and they had to fight and they had to fight their fears and other people and society. And, and that really appealed to me. Um, but like Aurora Greenway in terms of endearment, she's just a hoot and she's memorable. Um, and she's really engaging because you never know what she's going to do next. Uh, but a lot of characters can be odd choices and they work um, and the one that comes to mind and I haven't seen it done before is a poisonous monk mushroom in Joan Wilking's Mycology. I mean who has a mushroom as a character but it was a compelling character and it didn't really fear anything I guess except you know dying. Um, probably out west, and I probably drove through it and didn't even know it had a name. Um, I came, I come from a very small village, I guess you'd call it, um, in western New York. So that always feels very small. But I've seen smaller, I, but some of them, when you drive through, you don't notice their name. Um any other culture. <laughs> um, when I was growing up, I had a real fascination with Japan, though. And I still do. Um, they're just the small island and how everyone is so compact just is so intriguing to me. And it's not that you're related necessarily to everyone or that you know everyone but it's like a possibility that you could, and that intrigues me. Um, I guess to anyone who's ever read me, I appreciate you all. Um, and I do have a blog, it, it comes up under Creekside Reflection, um, where I just write about life and by a creek and writing. <laughs>